Okay, I'm going to demonstrate a little script I made for the Kerbal Space Program mod called KOS, the Automated Scripted Autopilot System. So here I have a sky crane designed craft that's currently on an impact path for the moon. I'll show that to you on the map. You'll notice it's a fairly high elliptical orbit, so it'll come in pretty fast and hard. That's not normally the way you'd want to land, but I'm trying to give the script a little bit of a challenge to work with. So here's the impact it's currently set on. And I'm going to get the code onto the craft. There we go. Now the craft has the code on it that it needs to have. I first start by running a thing I made called body stats, which tells you the statistics of the current orbital body. In this case, it's the moon. You can either ha you just type in the word body, which will use your current body, or you can type in the string name of some other body, like this, for example. When you type it in, it gets some information. What's the surface gravity on that planet like, or in this case, that moon? What's its radius? And these are some variables I use for my descent envelope. And my idea is that I'm going to have these for every body in the system. And eventually, instead of storing this information on the craft, it'll actually be stored in the archive back home, and you'll radio home to get it. But right now, this is just stored on the craft itself. OK, so then when I want to actually do the descent, I run the script I made called Descend, which has several modes, so you have to tell it which mode you want, which in this case is Sky Crane. I didn't spell Descend correctly. That's not going to work very well, is it? There we go. Sky Crane mode, Lander mode, and Hover mode are the three modes that you could set, set it to. And then the next thing I say is point two. Point two tells it the slope. What I'm saying there is, I refuse to drop the payload on any slope that is steeper than 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is probably being a little bit too picky. I would probably, in a real situation, set that a little higher and accept a bit more slope. But I'm setting it low just to ensure that it actually kicks in and you can see it happening. Okay, so I kick that off. And it won't do anything, as it says here, until it gets below 20,000 meters because that was what was set as the descend top for the moon. It's pretty low for the moon because you're expecting to be in orbit at a pretty low altitude. If it was on Kerbin, of course, that would be a bigger number. Okay, so I'm just going to accelerate time a bit here until I get to the point where the code actually has a thing to do. I'm doing things a bit backward from most people who are using KOS. Most people have started off by practicing how to make launching scripts and then going from there. I'm sort of starting from the backward end. What would the end of a mission look like? And then I'm working backward to launching scripts. So my landing script actually was the first thing I wrote. Which is why I have to set it up exactly right first. Because the presumption is that this would be coming from a piece of software that already had set it up for you. Accelerate too much because I don't have to smash right into the planet before the software kicks in. Okay, there we go. Now it tries to rotate itself to the surface retrograde mark, and it's smart enough not to kick in the motors until it notices it has finished rotating around. So until this gets really close, the engines won't kick in. There they go. This window will just show the stats as it descends the altitude above ground that it thinks it has. Now at this height, this number's faked because the, the radar altitude doesn't work at this height. So what it's really doing is taking the average of sea level and highest mountain that is known to exist on the planet and just guessing that halfway between those two is a possible ground height. When it gets lower to the ground, that number will suddenly correct once it has a better idea. The current thrust it's doing is one, which is the maximum. You can see that down here as well. The neutral thrust is the thrust that it has calculated would be exactly the right amount to hold the craft steady if it was thrusting straight up against gravity. And it uses that in its calculations. It knows that if it thrusts less than that, it descends, and if it thrusts more than that, it raises. That number changes over time because it's dependent upon the mass of the craft, and as fuel burns off, the number changes. 
The preferred speed is based upon a parabola-shaped path that I made a calculation for that basically says I don't want to do my burn linearly. I don't want to slow down and then go slow all the way to the ground because that'll eat up all the fuel. I'd rather do most of my retro burning at the bottom. So based upon the thrust to weight ratio of the craft, it guesses out how late it can wait before it can do its thrust. I'm a little bit conservative with that. I don't wait till the very bottom to do the thrust. I probably should. So it's a little bit wasteful of fuel. I can tweak those parameters a bit and have it wait until a bit lower before it does it. Current speed is how fast it thinks it is going. And basically, if the current speed is plenty, f is plenty slow enough, it cuts the engines back. If the current speed is going too fast, it pushes them up higher. And the ground slope is it's measuring <coughs> the altitude underneath it, the ground altitude beneath it, it can't see all the rest of the slope, it can only see right under it. But if it notices over time that the slope is, is changing too much, it will not allow itself to land at that location. So every once in a while you'll see the words seeking flatter show up right over here. That means it's over terrain that doesn't fit the parameter I gave it of 0.2, it's too high. And it will not allow itself to do the final last bit on that, it'll skip a little forward when it finds that kind of terrain. These little messages that keep saying program ended is unfortunately because every time you call a sub-program that message appears whether you want it to or not. There's no way to suppress it. Currently in version 0.65. However, I have a pretty good idea that that'll get fixed in a later version, which is why I haven't bothered doing anything about this. The sub-program that it's calling here, by the way, is a thing I made that calculates out east, north, and up vectors based upon your XYZ vectors, which is really important for getting the landing right. Now, as it comes in, it will probably not like the slope it's seeing. Unfortunately, it can only really see the slope in the direction it's going. So it sometimes will set itself on the side of a hill because it's going along the edge of the hill and not noticing the slope in the opposite, in the crossways direction. Unfortunately, there's no real good way to detect that in the moment. But it is smart enough now here to see that it shouldn't land here. So it's going to hover itself over a bit more sideways first. Until it detects some flatter land. At which point it will now accept that land and stop on it. And now it's coming down to a landing. Zoom this out a little bit. I have it set very gentle on the landing, as you can see. I would drop the sky crane now if it was possible for me to tell where the bottom of my craft is, but that's not a queryable thing, so I bring it all the way to a landing and then take off the top. So it's all the way to the ground, and now it takes off the top. So now if I toggle... Come on. There we go. There's my ground piece that I dropped off. Nice and safe. And it set the brakes right before it let go of it so that it was safe. And there it is on some nice flat ground instead of that highly sloped ground over here that it would have otherwise landed on. So that concludes the demonstration of the software. If you're curious to see what it actually looks like, I will be posting it somewhere and then putting a link in the description on the YouTube clip. Thank you, and I'm done.